Hey guys, my name is Emmerich. I'm a time-lapse photographer based in Los Angeles. Today I'm going to teach you how to shoot a detonite time-lapse with the M mod of your camera. It's a long hike all the way to that spot for you guys for the class. <laughs> for this tutorial today, I am in Griffith Park to get a nice view of the downtown LA skyline. A great subject for dead tonight. So I'm right here actually shooting a couple of dead time lapse because the clouds look amazing. It's super rare in Los Angeles to get those kind of clouds. So um, before actually I shoot the dead tonight, I shoot a few dead time lapses because it always it looks really cool, you know. You know, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome to the first video production of this uh, Master Dead Tonight Time Lapses class. I'm here today in Griffiths Park. It's a beautiful area. It's really windy, it's really cold. It's the winter here in Los Angeles, but I'm here, I'm set up. We're gonna be shooting a Dead Tonight Time Lapse in full manual mode. I'm gonna show you how I change my settings. I'm gonna show you how I change my shutter speed, uh, my aperture, my ISO, everything. It's gonna be a lesson only about the manual M mod of the camera and how to do the exposure ramping fully manual, all manual. So you're gonna be controlling your camera 100%. And I think for me, it's the best way to shoot a dead tonight time lapse. It's 4.34, sunset is about an hour and a half from now, maybe a little less. So yeah, I am early, but you can see in the back, we can see some beautiful fluffy clouds, puffy clouds, I don't know how we call them. Uh, but they look beautiful, so that's why I wanted to come here earlier. If you can come earlier on location, come earlier, obviously. I hate it when I have to rush to set up my shot, especially if you have beautiful scenery in front of you. Oh, look at the wind. Yeah. If you can come early on location, come early, but at least an hour before the sunset, an hour and a half is good. Um, to um, set up everything and start shooting on time. You also will still have the golden hour lights. You'll be a little bit before the golden hour, so you'll still have some daylight, some golden hour lights, dusk, blue hour, nights. It's a whole process, uh, but that's it. So right now I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna keep shooting a couple of uh, dead time lapses, and then when uh, I'm ready to shoot my dead tonight time lapse, I'm gonna show you everything about it. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so as you can see I'm using a polarizer so the sky looks really blue. Um, you can see, wow, okay, the polarizer, if I turn it, it looks really different. So I think I'm gonna go with something, maybe 50%, something like this, because it was really blue. I'm also going to zoom out because right now I am a little too zoom in. I'm also gonna shoot for a long period of time. I'm gonna be at slow shutter speed at night. It's a little windy. So I don't want to zoom too much. All right, let's see. I'm going to get a little more sky. I think actually it's pretty good like this. Um, you need to think in the future when you're doing a dead tonight. You already know this. I told you um, in the video before, uh, but you need to think in the future. How is my scene going to look like two hours from now where when everything is dark? Right now I have the city skyline, I have the clouds and I have some houses and like um, kind of neighborhood in front of it. So everything is gonna light up at night. I think this is a great day to night subject. I'm gonna make sure my tripod is stabilized with my uh, lens support, okay? All right, now I double check the composition, making sure what you can do is go to menu as well. You can do the SP ratio 69. And that way you can have the two black lines helping you um, make your composition a little better. It gives you like a, an idea how it's gonna look like when it says 69 aspect ratio. Uh, that looks pretty good. So now we can go back to 
the three by two. The next step will be to focus on the skyline. All right, making sure it's sharp. So what I like to do is go really blurry. All right, and then slowly go back to something super sharp. Okay, we are pretty good right now. So when it comes to my settings, I'm gonna go back to the text view so we can see the settings better. Uh, usually I like to start with F8 or F7.1 for the only reason that um, I don't actually change the aperture so much now, maybe two or three times. Uh, I used to start at F13 or F11, but I feel like it's better if you already start like F8 or F7.1. It's really good to actually hide the dust spots. If you um, shoot with wide open aperture, it's gonna hide the dust spots more than if you shoot F11 or F13. Uh, ISO 100, obviously, full batteries. Uh, make sure you're shooting RAW files, okay? And then, yeah, feel like for the shutter speed, I think it's pretty good right now. We are at zero on the exposure value. You can also use your, you know, live view to figure out if it looks good, and it does look good. So I think now we can actually select or interval right here. So do that, I'm using the LR Time Lapse Pro Timer 3. Oh, I was actually on already. And I shoot my day tonight, you already know this, between five and eight seconds. Today, since we have the clouds, I'm gonna shoot for an hour and a half. I feel like we can select six seconds. So I'm gonna go time lapse manual, select six seconds right here. Oops, okay. Six second, all right. Maybe six point, no, I'm gonna select six seconds. It's gonna be fine. Unlimited number of frames, and then we can start, okay. All right, and to save some battery, um, I'm going to go back to the text view and show you how you can actually shoot your entire day tonight using only the live view and the text. You don't even need to see your pictures. I'm not even kidding. All right, now it's taking the pictures and uh, I'll show you how I do the exposure ramping manually. I'm very aware of all the new tools available on the market today to change the camera settings automatically, or at least without touching your setup. Even just AV mod is okay most of the time, but I'm an old fashioned kind of person who likes to do things in a very crafty way. That is the reason why I'm going to teach you the simple technique today, M mod, which I do all the time with my own work anyway. All right guys, we've been shooting, I have been shooting for like 10, 15 minutes and it's getting really cold. I already changed my shutter speed a couple of times because uh, the sun is going down really fast. So you can check your meter or also call the exposure value. And if you keep it between zero and minus one stop, 90% of the time it'll be fine. On Lightroom, you'll have a good exposure for your highlights, usually the sky, which is very bright and your shadows might look a little dark, but it's okay, you'll still have tons of information you can bring up, bring back up on Lightroom. So um, utilize the exposure value as much as you can and make sure usually to stay between close to zero all the way to minus one stop on your meter is gonna be fine. Right now I'm really close to minus one, so what I can do is just change my shutter speed. I'm actually minus one, poof. I just changed the shutter speed from 160 to 150. If I want to, I can do the, ex the entire exposure ramping just looking at the text right here. But if you want to check your picture, just go back to the live view or you can just preview the picture, the image. Here you can see my uh, foreground looks a little dark and the sky is okay. So I'm going to change my shutter speed one more time. Make sure I don't get very dark shadows. And then, uh, yeah, that's how we do it. So like I just say, it's very important to keep an eye on your highlights when shooting a day tonight. You, there's a lot of situation you're gonna come across where you're gonna have a big difference between your shadows and your highlights. It's gonna be a very high, high dynamic range and a lot of cameras cannot expose well for both. So keep an eye on your highlights, which is most of the time the sky or the clouds in the sky. Between zero and minus one stop on your exposure value, uh, you should be well exposed and you have a lot of information to uh, play with when you go to Lightroom for uh, your shadows. I gotta keep an eye on this one here because it's just the light has actually, this, the sun just set. So the light is changing very fast right now. You can use if you want just the text view if you have enough batteries. But I'm gonna go back to the live view to uh, check how my pictures look like, you know? Right now it's way too dark, so <laughs> I'm gonna change it. Wow, 
while we're shooting the Dead Tonight time lapse, I think this is a good time to talk to you about today's sponsor, Pond5.com. Pond5 is the first marketplace I started selling my time lapse videos on over eight years ago now, and it is by far my favorite. So I'm really happy they're sponsoring this video today. Pond5 is the world's most accessible marketplace of media assets, including over 30 million stock footage, a million music tracks, a million sound effects, as well as After Effects templates, illustrations, Photoshop mockups, and over 40 million images. Do you need a New York City time lapse? He heard 22,000 of them to pick from. What about some pop rock music for your next project? Pick one from almost 70,000 tracks. And yes, there's a lot of content for every single search. But no need to worry as their advanced search tools allow you to add some filters and narrow down the content to exactly what you're looking for. All the content available on Pond5 is made by artists like you and me selling their artwork and earning some royalties from it. Pond5 is the only platform offering up to 60% of creators and they give additional incentives if you refer buyers to the platform. So if you license some content on Pond5, you are supporting the artists behind it. And since Pond5 is sponsoring this video today, they are offering you 20% off your first purchase if you use the link in the description below. And if you are an artist looking to make a little bit of money from your content, check the Pond5 Creator Program and you can earn up to 60% for every single sale that you make on the platform. They recently updated their storefront and the referral program and it's so much easier now than before to showcase your work, make it more visible to potential buyers and earn just by you know referring buyers to Pond5. Okay so one thing that is very important when you're shooting a dead tonight and a secret to get a very um, flawless transition is to really change one increment at a time. Don't do two shutter speed, three shutter speed, no just one shutter speed, wait a few frames, minimum I would say five or ten, change the shutter speed another time. If you're late on your transition maybe two or three frames minimum um, but look i'm gonna do one poof and that's it i would not go in other increments and i think the secret to get an awesome flawless transition and to help our time lapse create a flicker free time lapse is to really go a little bit by a little bit is that how you say it a little by little <laughs> a little by little let's just go smaller steps instead of bigger steps uh, more steps, but smaller steps. And I think that's what's going to help uh, create a better transition later on. And this is what I just did right now. And it's a good example today that, um, you know, I was exp using my exposure value, but then I uh, checked the live view and I can see that my uh, the exposure value is around zero, which looks good, but the shadows are a little dark. So sometimes I use the exposure value, but the more um, a tool that works all the time is your own eyes. Just check out your own eyes, check out your highlights and your shadows. And as you can see again here, I took about five frames, six frames. Well, I can change again because I estimate that my shadows are too dark. And changing the shutter speed not one more time is not going to blow, uh, blow up the highlights. So I'm, I'm safe to do so. So yeah, sometimes use the exposure value if you have really high contrast or very bright highlights. But today, since we're facing south, beautiful reflection right now. Uh, Will should be fine and we can change the settings early. Yeah, so it's been, I've been shooting for 45, 40, so I've been shooting for 40, 45 minutes now and I'm still changing the shutter speed, still F8, like um, same aperture than the beginning and same ISO than the beginning. I realized that sometimes I can actually end up changing only the shutter speed depending on, um, on the scene and my, and my subjects, depending on bright it is at night. I can sometimes just change the shutter speed. And right now, since I have a six second interval, I can definitely go up to five second shutter speed, but I am not gonna go all the way to five seconds. I'm gonna go all the way to maybe four seconds and see if I need to change my aperture and my ISO. Let's change one more time, all right.
All right, guys, uh, now I'm at four seconds shutter speed. It's time to change my um, aperture a couple of times because if I look at the picture, uh, I, might, I am actually a little underexposed. So I'm gonna do the aperture right now. Poof, it's just a tiny wheel right there. And you can see now I am at um, F7.1. I'm probably gonna go to 6.3 or yeah, I think 6.3 is gonna be the maximum and then change the ISO. And that's it. Maybe the shutter speed one more time. I'll see. Okay, so now I changed my shutter speed. I changed my aperture. I need to change the ISO because my shot still looks a little dark for the night uh, settings. So this is what I'm gonna do. That's why I actually stopped changing the shutter speed at four seconds, even though I could go to five seconds, but I would only have one second between the end of the shutter and the next picture. So right now at four seconds, it gives me two seconds to change the ISO. You always want to think about this when you're gonna change your aperture or your ISO settings. You wanna keep some time to change the settings. And depending on what interval meter you're using, you might have what we call an autofocus signal. An autofocus signal is going to block the camera about two seconds before triggering. So you can't do anything on the camera two seconds before it's gonna take the picture. To this, since I am using the Pro Timer, I don't have an autofocus signal, so I can actually change the settings all the way to the end. Um, so if two seconds is not enough to change the settings, give your camera and yourself three seconds to change the settings, maybe four seconds. Uh, so you have to go outside and do some tests on what works with your own gear. All right, so I'm gonna change the ISO really quickly. Up ISO, I turn it the wheel. And the thing is, once you selected your ISO, you don't have to click on selected. Uh, if you just leave the selection to, I don't know, 125, 160, it's gonna trigger and take the next picture using the ISO you selected. So you can click on ISO, turn the wheel to the selected value and just wait. You don't even have to select um, the value, just the picture is going to use, and I'm gonna do it again right now after the picture. Up, ISO, poof, and then 160. So in less than a second, I am down, I am done. And right now, I actually went back to something pretty cool. Yeah, right now I'm actually better, better exposed. You'll see on error time-lapse anyway, um, what, what happened. All right, guys, as you can see, it is dark time now. Uh, we are shooting, I'm here with John actually. Thank you, John, for filming right now. Uh, we are shooting some night lapses, how we call it, night time lapses, because we have some low clouds that are kind of reflecting the city lights right now. City lights, sorry, so it looks amazing. So it's all good for the day tonight. Now we're gonna go back to the studio. We're gonna post process it. I'm gonna show you the entire workflow for this single time-lapse today that we just shot together. So let's go home. For watching everyone don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to make sure you don't miss the next episode or maybe it's already out so click on that video right here